Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Sorry, I'm just a little late. Uh, for we will continue till ten fifteen, right? Uh, it is not my mistake. It is the institution not open, right? Okay. So thank you very much for being sacrificing yourself. It's a poor day, right? Nobody has gone to see, no. Right. So let me start from where we have left last time. Uh, so we did a um, question, no? I mean, not a question, basically. Uh, all right. So what we discussed this question, no? So uh, I'll ask you to think uh, to add, write this question. I mean, how, I don't know how many of you have written, but it doesn't matter. Right now, uh, now the questions, I think you can remember the two questions. One is purely for uh, my uh, bank's management question. Uh, the other one is basically for purely on low, but we will see how can we address that issue. Now, you know, the, the question is, Mrs. Uh, NDS is one of our one of our bank customer, calls over at the bank with the court order now remember there's a specific word here the court order court order to pay proceeds of a deposits belongs belonging to mr dts that is his husband who is this is right however in personal of mandate you have found that as your manager you as a manager you found that uh, mr dks has submitted a duly file filled uh, nomination form in favor of his mistake Right, his son, along with the fixed deposit and all the what now, ND is yes, now Mrs. Call for an uh, at the branch. Now, as manager, uh, you have noted that uh, that's already, despite the fact of the court order received from NDS, uh, but there are some nominations to be the nomination done for his son. Now, question is briefly state the custom oriented solution. Now we we now the, the think about the word custom oriented solution. The moment you say custom oriented solution, me, uh, I mean you have to explain all these things. We need to assume that Mrs. D S also a good customer of our bank, right? So therefore we need to uh, explain the situation uh, in very politely and very uh, without getting. Uh, annoyed, right? Okay. Now, first, what we need to do first, you know, the what is the uh, theoretical aspects or law behind this story? We know the uh, section five hundred and forty-four, and I'm always telling you that you need to remember section five hundred and five hundred and forty-four of civil procedure code deals with the nominations. So, if you want to start with that you can start that also right uh, section 544 of the civil procedure code deals with the legal aspect of uh, making nominations right now according to the uh, that civil procedure code we categorically mentioned that nomination nomination supersedes the last way right supersedes the last way now nds brought the court order but the court not aware about the nomination facility mr dk has done even though we have the court order remember right remember even though we have the court order so the nomination supersede that also right okay now what to do now mrs ds comes to your bank and uh, provide the court order to the marriage so then you have to explain this is the yes about the nomination has done by his husband her husband let's look at it right now mrs nds would have received the correct court order to receive the funds in the fixed deposit since the must be not aware of the nomination provided by dks before his death now that first you need to mention that mr dks nomination is not aware by the mrs ds that's the fine. Even though he has gone to court and got the cleared letter, that court order is correct. But the only issue is, which is NDS is not aware that Mr. DKS. Now, now usually, 
nomination instructions would supersede the court order. Now, if you want to say, you can say, yeah, it's a, uh, under section 544 of the Civil Procedure Code, deals with the legal aspect of making nomination to, uh, to the account. So, in this case, the nomination instruction would supersede the court order received for payment of its deposit of a disease. Right? Bank should ensure that the nomination, now the important thing is, the bank also should ensure that nomination is duly filled and authenticated to ensure its validity. Right? That is why the case said, there's a specific code here. Mr. Dickey has submitted a duly, duly filled nomination form. That means he has correctly done these nominations, right? That That's the important thing. So we need to, as a manager, we don't need to see whether his nomination has correctly filled and put all the information respect to the uh, uh, pertinent to the FD uh, account number, the nominees, ID number, all things are correctly and also endorsed by the manager and also included in your register. Usually you have a register of, right? Or so some banks are now having the system and some banks top of the system. Also, they are making a register, nomination register. Right. Okay. Now we assume all things have done. However, it is advisable that the bank seek legal department advice before taking any decision in this regard situation. But usually, even though we are aware that uh, the uh, nomination supersede the last will, even the court order, always your know, every every bank is having a legal department or legal division. Always better to get some views about the legal department. You can send a small letter or call the legal head and ask if there is something, what, what is the action. Right? He may give you advice also, but he or she also gave the same advice. But better to mention, we get, and then, right? So that then we will uh, uh, politely explain the Mrs. D.S. Uh, now you need to explain, this is the theory behind. Now you call Mrs. NDS, you can say Mrs. NDS also one of our customer. So we must call her uh, and uh, give the, uh, uh, and inform him uh, the legal background and what he has, uh, his husband has done a nomination to him and tell him her also, right? Tell her also the story and he is uh, without getting any anger. Then also, I remember one important thing. Now, NDS has bought the correct court order. It is a duty of a manager also, uh, quoting that court case and court order number or whatever the, the whatever the references, inform the respective judge or district court to. Uh, said since this uh, uh, pertaining to this court order, since according to the nomination, this we cannot execute because uh, the Mr. DKS has already nominated. So therefore, we have to compel to give this money to his son. So better also while explaining the uh, the problem to Mrs. NDS as well as send a letter also to the court or district judge or whoever pertaining to refer to this court order and tell the bank's point. Right? Clear? Either. Okay? Right. I hope you understood. Now the second case. What is the second case? Larry's case. Now, Larry is a leading businessman. Married twice and divorced both wives. Right, he had four children for both such marriages. Uh, I don't know how many for one or two or three like that, right? But all four children are previous marriage. So he made a last will leaving all his bank fixed deposits, his finance companies and banks and everything. And after making the last will, he got married to a foreign lady, and few months after, so suddenly died. Now. Uh, the foreign lady uh, got to know that uh, Larry's children uh, basically uh, tried to claim the, the his property the, based on the last bill and Larry's widows disputed such claims. Now, my question is what to do now? 
but you need to remember this this is what is a this is not the nomination right and this is in fact the last week this is not the uh, nomination and this is the in fact the last week so now what happened you have the last week right but it is to, for you to get an understand about the uh, court order right now last will we call prevention of fraud ordinance law just to under so this is pure law case but i will try to explain right last will prevention of fraud ordinance law is valid now the the last will written by uh, larry is correct last will written by larry is correct she has properly yes properly written down under what preventions of fraud ordinance law but remember the important thing is, in the sri lanka law larry married foreigner before after the last will executed so that's the important thing now larry uh, married again and then before that larry was executed the last will now that is the law covers under will and succession in sri lanka so in the terms of that right the important thing is once the last will can be revoked automatically by the marriage of the testator that means once uh, uh, larry married again the last will automatically revoke so therefore in this case the sons are not entitled to the whatever the uh, things uh, mentioned in their last will by this by the hellary because he had married again right so while he was married he written to the four children okay now once you written and then married again the last will according to the provision of fraud ordinance will revoke by the marriage of the testator so then what may be the ideal situation the lari need to be done in this case without having any dispute any problem what is the best solution for lari can anybody tell me what is the best solution lari should have done it huh? rather than writing a last will lari went uh, write it if if larry writing a uh, uh, right that uh, and the last uh, sorry the nomination this type of problem would arise so the ideal solution for here not to have a last will what the nomination why the nomination is always superior than or supersede the last will. right if this case what is the ideal solution or what should have done by the larry instead of last will he may prepare a nominations so these problems won't be coming right so this is purely low case but ideal solution for this is the last will uh, so the solution is the nomination now i think you understood the nomination clear are okay uh, sir understood yeah i have Any a question, question? Yes, yeah, sure. uh, 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 if uh, once he got the uh, once he got divorce, he has given yeah. before before he got the divorce, he has given the nomination to the bank. After divorce, he forgot to change the nomination. No, nomination few, never uh, changed. Yeah, a few. Nomination uh, never changed. Yeah, never changed. Nomination, even though even though you married and married and married and married and married again, nomination is the what. unless otherwise but uh, the larry can write and re revoke the uh, re how how nomination can be revoked there are two ways the uh, nomination can be revoked one is the larry himself can write a new one or the nominee must be died there's a two occasion nomination can get cancelled are the third one now yeah. how can you get the nomination cancel one is so the nominee say i suppose i nominated x guy right my all the properties i nominate to mr x 
Suppose the excess die, the nomination is automatically finished. Okay? I am not that, but the nomination died, nominee died. So that is automatically removed. Otherwise, otherwise, what can I do? I can change my nomination from X to Mr. Y. Now that is the role procedure in Sri Lanka. You know, when the father or mother get older, these sons, you know, uh, Podiputa, Lokuputa, Lokuaka, Loku, Lokudua, Lokunangi, whatever, they will take the, we have enough experience, things like that, Buddha. I will tell you that story also. As bankers, we have enough experience. Now, suppose uh, I, I get old. I, I, I have some property I have not nominated yet. I have some banks, accounts and all. My, uh, I'm now old, right? But provided I, I am also I'm in some better condition. So my elder son come to me and say, Kati, come to my house. I will look after you and kill my mother. So they treated me very well. He was say, what happened? Kati, can you nominate your deposits to my name? So I'll go and uh, I make a nomination. I go to the bank with my son. I make a nomination form and hand it over to the bank manager. So bank manager, I done it purely a uh, professional way in a legal manner. Now I have nominated my elder son. Okay. Now that's the important thing. Then after he got the nomination, the treatment coming to me is not good. Then I really again never any. Then I can't that that fall part down. He was now that get fed up. Now that call youngest youngest uh, uh, son. And younger son also came and said, uh, that's what I told Tata. Uh, that, yeah, that so then what happened? Kovari, he comes again the father and Go to the bank and tell the father, Tati, now you uh, you need to change the nomination, revoke the nomination. So I'll go to the bank, manager also there. So I will revoke and put it to the, my younger son. My goodness, right? One of them are little, you know, for me. Okay, clear? Understood. Now I have written to him now my nomination. Earlier one is revoke. Right? But my elders are really not aware of that, right? And I give a new fresh nomination. Now, that also like that, it can be taken place like that. Then, suppose I, something happened to me. Now, elders are having a, this also usually, usually a manager need to call the uh, certificate, but it never happened, no, right? Now, when something happened, my younger son also bring the uh, that nomination for, for, and my elder son also bring the nomination for. Now, what, whether, how it happened now? Are you giving to my elder son or younger son? The money is uh, given to my elder son or younger son? Younger son. Right? Younger son. Younger son. Younger son. Right? But the elders are get mad. No, but he also, no, 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 here, here. I am also having a this thing. Then you have to show. In this case, remember, as a manager, you need to do a small thing. Manager need to be properly cancel the earlier nomination. Properly cancel the earlier nomination and has to re-register the new one. Now, I have some experience in my bag earlier. Anyhow, now the, now the system is now, uh, now the present because of the new technology, uh, what happened, uh, now you are not, uh, without cancelling the first one, you cannot put it to the second one. Now systems will look in after, but earlier there is no systems like that, all are manually recorded. However, the manager forget no whatever to cancel the first one. Both names are there without cancelling only. They they put the to register the two names, and then whatever. So these people has gone to uh, ombudsman, and ultimately the bank has to pay the 
money for both guys. Why? It is a bad, it is a bad mistake. Without cancelling proper the first one and giving another one. So therefore, remember now the systems. Now you cannot put in a second one. Now the present IT systems are there. You cannot put the second one. Earlier is not like that. Earlier only we are keeping the hard copies. So whatever the earlier marriage uh, without cancelling the first one, second one also registered. So therefore both are valid. So whose fault they? Bank fault, right? Okay, I think you understood. Can be revoked, but marriage. Last will automatically revoke, but nomination cannot be revoked other than two incidents. The nominator can be changed another nominee or nominee be died, but that is all automatically is lapsed. Understood? Clear? Okay, brother. Yes, boss. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, your problem is sorted out now, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. If you have any problem, very interesting, right? And usually, there's usually uh, this is very important because you see, uh, nomination is a very much powerful tool uh, to the banks where you can Excuse market me, this. Yeah, okay. Any question? In Larry's case, if the widow doesn't yeah. know that Larry had such deposits with the bank and his children has yeah. withdrawn the money after his death. And if after some time his widow got to know about the case, uh, yeah. what shall the bank do? Is the bank liable? That's a very good question. Okay, so uh, what? So that is the duty. Uh, then of course, then of course, what? There are two ways, right? I'm I'm not a lawyer to answer, but I will try to answer to that question, right? Now, if you said the lady is not aware about that, right? So the important thing is. The Larry may have uh, informed the bank once you get married. Uh, yeah, I have all uh, married and I opened or something. Some marriage certificate. Too. Otherwise, bank does no no me. That's okay. That is her whose fault. That is why it is a. Uh, but you can't last will through the last will. Remember, you cannot. You cannot. The bank based on the last will, they won't give the money. So when you go to the last will, it has to be testimonial, right? So you have to have a f action. When they call, they call from, uh, are there any people who is, now uh, once you have the last will, so the, uh, it is go to the court. Even though you have the last will, the bank get the instruction from the court. Bank cannot, not acted based on the last will. Last will, now he has to, uh, is, we call it testimonial case. Right? We have to put a uh, cost testimony. At the court point, they will put a notice. Are there any people who interest about the properties? Then they they have to give a declaration. They don't the court decide. Right? Bank is nothing to do with because bank execute the court order, even though the last week. So banks not going to act based on the last will, right? Last will put in. We have to go to the courts, and court will take a decision. Then that is why early NBS bring the court order. Clear, yeah, understood. So the, just because of you having a, a last will, so bank not exe uh, not executed that, right? Court order has to come to the bank. At that point, the court will look. Uh, court will uh, search. Are there any other people other than these people who are right? That's the point. Clear, Buddha? Yes, sir. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Now, right now, uh, we moving to the next one. Okay. Right now, I just give you a question. Uh, you can do the same question what we have done. You can use for savings, demand, and term deposit. That is your word document. This question is there. You try to uh, answer this question, right? Then you are very much thorough with savings, products, and term and demand, right? Okay. Now we are going to discuss another important, uh, another important area. Uh, what you call by the effective interest rate, right? Very interesting area. There is a one question on this. Right, we will discuss this question and we will I try to explain this.
explain this rationale. So what do you mean by effective interest rate? Then, if single M make it, can anybody tell me what what do you mean by effective interest rate in single? Sapala poly anupad. Sapala Very good. Sapala poly Now you know there is a rule in uh, banking uh, law. Uh, in fact, it's a direction of central bank. Wherever you advertise, remember this also, right? Where whenever you advertise any product or interest rate according to the central bank guideline, you need to mention effective rate. Interest rate can price advertisement in effective rates in the morning. you know, when we are selling chemicals, right? So pesticide or we decide what we say. Palipo de Nasaka Anuturu Sahitai, Travi Semim Bavitakar. So, likewise, what is the precaution? If something happened when you misuse it, what to do? Ange Wagi, compulsory statements are there. For wherever the bank advertise the interest rate, you need to mention the effective interest rate. Right. For you to understand that, right, you need to understand. So let me try to explain this concept uh, through use of a, your past exam. Now this paper, uh, this question is your 2017 March question number three. 20 marks, right? Okay, let's read this question. Your bank has placed an advertisement in the newspapers. Name double your investment in five years. Double your investment in five years. Now you put an advertisement. That means, right? If you put in 100,000, after five years, you get 200,000. Right? Now, so the advertisement said double your. Uh, I do this. Now just look at it, right? Can you? Uh, I know you know how to uh, read the board, board, right? Right. Now say. So if you put one hundred thousand rupees after five years, how much you are getting? Two hundred thousand. So that is the case. That is the advertisement. Advertisement say, but. Double your investment in five years. So double you put your money in my bank. Now you can get double in five years time. Now customer get confused this. Right? And comes to meet you. Customer meets you and asks further details of this as is very interested in this product due to doubling the money. Briefly give me explanation on each of the following keeping customers charter in my mind for don't worry now what is the asking he asked three questions what is the interest rates of the deposit what is the effective rate interest rate of the deposit so the second and fourth one is easy what are the advantages and disadvantages of a long-term deposit possibility of obtaining an advance in the case of an emergency yes you can take up to 90 percent of the fixed deposit. that's a well so let's look at it now the one and two right okay right clear now what is the interest rate of the deposit now say so one hundred thousand in order to get double it what you be interested first year twenty thousand twenty thousand twenty thousand twenty thousand so now what is the total interest rate one second Third, four, fifth, one, two, three, four, five, one hundred thousand, and plus your in cap in capital investment, one hundred thousand. So how much you're getting finally? Two hundred thousand. Right? Simple question. In order to get the twenty thousand for month for year, what is your interest? Huh? What is your interest? It's like this. Now say. 100,000 
20 percent interest. So how much you are getting? Twenty thousand here. Second year same, right? Right, like this. Right. So you get twenty uh, twenty thousand. Right. So ultimately, so this is the normal interest rate. As a responsible officer, you need to explain this product in detail to the customer because it is your right. Uh, it is a customer's right, and it is your obligation. If the money invested is double in five years, this means that the bank pays how much? Twenty percent per annum, and the interest paid at maturity. Interest paid at maturity. So, what is interest rate there for? Twenty percent. Now, what do you think? Something is missing in this calculation. No, what is this missing? Understood. Something is missing in the now say one hundred thousand, twenty percent every year. So you get twenty thousand, twenty thousand into five. So then one hundred thousand, you are investment from one hundred thousand double it. So that interest rates of the deposit is the how much interest rate? Twenty percent. But you need to explain to here. You need to mention that customer. What is lacking here? You won't get what interest on interest. Now, say for an example, what is the here? What is the second year? Uh, what is the second year? Actually, how much is having now? One hundred thousand plus twenty thousand. So, what is your total capital now? One hundred and twenty thousand. So the second year, you must get. If it is the twenty percent, you get not one hundred thousand. You get this. So now, how much you are getting? Other than oh, so twenty four thousand, you get extra four thousand. So interest on now the third year, you add. One twenty to twenty four, and how much you are getting? Four hundred and forty four, and twenty percent like that. We keep on adding. You are not compounded here, right? You are not compounded here. Why? Right? Okay, understood now. Now it is important to mention that the interest is paid on the original capital, and no interest on interest is. Pay right? No interest on interest. Why? After first year, what is your interest? Twenty percent. So then, hundred and twenty thousand. So you need to get twenty percent for one hundred and twenty, not one hundred thousand. Right? Okay. So you need to tell the customer on this. So you are not getting interest on interest in normal account, but as far as the Effective interest rate of being the effective interest rate of the deposit is the interest rate that is actually earned on a fixed deposit due to the result of compounding over a given period of time. What is that? Compound. Apni meke the single link yano mana poliya kiya na? Well poliya kiya na. Ito ko neko poliya hambe na hada normal interest rate kine. Right, effective interest mean atima hamben no oni poli. Okay, atima hamben no oni poli. I I I I hope you understood. Right, you know the now the difference between effective interest rate and uh, normal interest rate. Okay, clear. So. Normal interest rates, without calculating or only the original capital and only the interest for that year, the interest is paid end of the five-year period. But in uh, but in the effective interest rate, what is happened? That is actually on a fixed deposit due to such a compounding over a given period of time. That means you are getting one hundred thousand twenty percent, and the second year you are getting one hundred and twenty thousand. 
plus 50 percent then at that figure in the capital plus interest you are getting the interest for the subsequent year so that is what you call effective interest rate of divisors right okay now i will have a formula for you i have a formula for you right it is in your last page now think on this example if you can quote on this idea what is the example stated publish rate for one year fixed deposit now say for an example this is a principle there is a way of calculation because i don't want to put you into trouble you may i don't know whether you are learning in survey but i just tell you the principle right now say one bank mentioned your annual rate is 10 percent one year one year you say your stated published rate for one year fixed deposit is 10 percent example so the annual effective rate is equal to nominal interest rate the rate of interest for first year same it got a Right? Remember that. The annual effective rate of interest is lower than 10% for more than one year deposits. Remember the second one. Suppose one year more than your uh, your uh, your uh, FD period, so you won't get the ten percent. Usually, you are getting less than that. Right now, it is equal the one year deposit and more year, and more than ten year for less than one year. Right? Okay. How it depends how you compute it. Clear? Right. Now think about, suppose you are, your rate is one year, say your FD rate, right. Now you need to remember this, then we do some questions, right? Say, one year, interest rate. Say 10 percent, right? This is the percentage. But say you have one year rate is 10 percent. Now, in this case, your interest rate, normal interest rate, is for one year. For one year, if you want to jot down one year, interest is equal to annual effective rate. Effective interest rates, okay. Effective interest rate. So here, still is. Suppose you are you are getting monthly interest. Monthly interest. Your annual interest rate is ten. You are getting the monthly interest. What is your interest rate? Ten percent. But your effective interest rate, effective rate of interest, is more than. That means more than ten percent. Suppose it, that means you are less than one year. You are getting the interest, right? Suppose you are getting more than one year. More than one year, your interest rates is sorry, effective rate is less than effective interest rate is less than ten percent. Okay, so this is the principle. So you need to remember, right? Okay, clear, understood. 
Any question? Uh, sir, I am not able Any to see Tell me, Buddha. I, I didn't hear you. What did you say? The first one is, uh, sir, one year interest rate equal to? Now say, okay, I'll, I'll just put you like this. Now say one normal, we declare normal one year, one year rate, right? Annual if interest rate, normal interest rate is 10% for sale, right? Okay. If you're going for one year fixed deposit, one year fixed deposit, annual effective rate or effective interest rate is equal to normal interest rate. I mean 10% normal annual rate, that effective rate also 10%. Why it is calculated for one year? Suppose your interest going to take by monthly or uh, half yearly or three months and all, your effective rate is more than 10%. More than 10%. More than the normal annual rate. But if you are going to put the money for two years, your effective rate is less than 10 years. Right? Clear than that? A principle like a hundred. If you're not clear, tell me again. I will explain. Oh, otherwise we will do some questions, then you will understand. Right? Okay, let me do for some questions with you. Actually, these questions is not my questions. These questions are, are basically uh, from commercial banking. Let's look at it. Right. Now let's look at it. Question. Question Commercial Banking March 2017. If a bank offers 6% percent, percent that 6% percent mean annual rate, right? 6% interest rate payable monthly for savings deposit. Okay, now say for a question if a bank offers instead of 10%, here the normal interest rate for a year is. If you say 6% is annual, right? Interest, 6% interest payable. Payable, this interest is going to pay you for your savings deposits monthly. What is the effective rate of interest? What may be the answer? Now, look at this principle. What is the correct answer? Now, if banks offer 6% annually, so what the examiner asking, if you pay, yes, interest, don't wait till for one year, it's the same as product. Monthly you are getting the interest. So then we ask your, your annual interest rate, whether it is 6% or it is more than 6% or it is less than 6%. About 12%, we forget a million. What may be the correct answer? More than 6%. Huh? More, More than, than 6%. 6%. Clear? More than 6%. Why? I've always told you if you normal interest rate is, is uh, your effective rate is equal to normal interest rate for one year deposits. If you go more than one year, two year, three year like that, then your nominal or effective interest rate is less than your annual rate. But if you are offering interest uh, less than one year period, remember your effective interest rate is higher than the annual rate. Clear? Any questions? Right, let's look at this question. Now see whether you can answer, right, more than 6%. Right, this is again the commercial banking, right? Not my question, but this principle support you answer the other papers as well. What is the answer? If a bank offers a one-year fixed deposit to pay interest of 10% monthly, the effective interest rate is now, when are they going to get interest? Monthly. Right? Remember, you are going to get the interest monthly, not at after completion of one year. If you going to get your interest, even for savings, 
one year, what is the rate of interest? 10%. That means effective interest rate is equal to the normal one year rate. Right? If suppose your fixed deposit for not only one year, maybe two years, annual rate is 10%. What is the effective rate? Less than 10%. But in this case, fixed deposits uh, uh, pay interest monthly, that means more than 10%. So what may be the correct answer? More than 10%. Clear? Answer is more than 10%. Right? Any questions? Have you understood? Right? Harida, clear the no questions, no no feedback from you. Right? Chat take a karidan. Right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, be, uh, be, be, right, okay, you have given answers, no? Right. But maybe the answer, right, okay. Understood? Clear the Huh? Yes, no, sir. no see, no, yes, no. Sir. Right, okay. Yes, I need feedback, right? Then only I also motivated. No, I don't know whether you understood or not. Now this principle you need to remember. Samare matake ni apni body kaale sutre hi me matake diya gatta ni. Neither me no kova ino bade dal ne. Honestly, uh, your effective rate is calculated. If you want, it's a formula. This formula, right? There is a formula to calculate annual effective rate, right? So E R, right? But don't worry. So we don't worry about this, right? This is the way to calculate, right? But this formula, forget that, right? In your level, to don't worry about this level. Only thing is, annual rate is equal to effective rate for one year. Annual effective rate. Sorry, uh, your normal effective rate of interest is more than if I take the interest before one year. Maybe monthly, maybe annual, maybe, uh, maybe uh, daily, maybe uh, quarterly like that. So your effective rate is always more than 10%. But your fixed deposit is more than one year. Then only the annual interest is 10% now. So your effective rate is always less than 10 so that's the principle okay right what is missing here so that case is you are not getting the compound interest right in less than that you get the compound interest no? right clear okay i hope you understood right yeah. uh, another yeah. questions yeah okay go ahead any question yeah. Buddha? Yes, I huh? have a question. Yeah. Sir, so what is the process behind the annual effective rate that means uh, to compensate more amount? Right. Okay, okay. Good, good questions. Thank you very much for raising this question. Now, we would say for an example, two banks. Good question. Two, or not, I mean, okay, good question. So, I like that question. So I try to explain. Good question. Now, say two banks, bank A and bank B. Now they say five-year deposits. We pay you a 30% at maturity. We get to this one, for example, 30% five-year deposit at maturity, annual rate, annual rate, interest rate, annual interest rate, right? Then B, putting, I'll give you a 17.84% AER for your five-year fixed deposit, right? For a normal person, 
which bank is going to deposit their money? Huh? Which bank they usually go? Bank B. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no, no, normal person. They don't know about ARO, nothing. Right? But they look at it. They look at it only this 30% and say maybe 20%. For example, who? Are you a bank? Go the other one. Bank B, they may be signed. So people are going to this bank. Because what they say, what this bank is telling our annual effective rate, <coughs> and this is if you are going to tell 30% is normal interest rate. But at maturity. But at maturity. Even for you say for door wheel five, we put two, three years. Put three years here. Double the rocky like you like that. Three years. Why? If you really calculated the effective rate, annual effective rate, you are getting something around 16% or something. If you calculate this annual rate by more than one year, AR is less than this amount. But still more than this. A more uh, AR here and here when you calculate ARC. So for that here you need to calculate ER. AR. AR well, 16 here. But what is AR you are getting? 20%. Okay. Right? So that's the importance of having and only issue uh, it is a duty of banks uh, to educate the general public about this AER, right? Somebody has to educate it. That is why central bank always tell you, when you uh, put an advertisement, you need to always put AER. Then, the customer has idea, so he tried to find out what is this. That is why you come to your bank and ask about that double your case. What is the what what do you mean by AER annual effective rate? I'll tell you another important thing. Now the now you know according to we are going to learn according to the customer charter, all the banks need to publish annual uh, publish uh, quarterly annual reports in the newspapers. Are you aware on that? Hammer Masekam, Hammer Kotekakim See, Ilanga Masa Deka Katulata, A Bankuala Annual Report, Landmages Tunima, Puat Patula, Palakala Yuti. Right? After completions of one quarter, every every bank need to be published their annual, uh, what you call the uh, annual uh, performance, or I mean the quarterly performance, all in newspapers in three language, single English term. Right now, say first year. Now, okay, it's like this. Now, say January, February, March. That's a quarter finish. Right? Every bank need to publish the first quarter results before April, May, before May 30th. So, second quarter, the first quarter results done. It was say, Ila got in the June, August, June, July, August. Before August 31st, Ila got caught again, it's because that. Clear? It is a compass, right? Then there's an issue on this. When new banks put their annual reports, uh, disclosures so or figures, different, different banks are put at, put it a different different uh different uh forwards therefore easy to understand now central banks give the forward every bank put the same forward every bank must put the same forward then only people can compare easily this bank versus this bank figures otherwise the figures can be distorted it's very difficult to uh Very difficult to uh, 
Kavya. So that is why we need to Kavya. Uh, right? I think I have answered to that question, Puta. The somebody has asked question. What is the importance of uh, this clause AR? Are the Puta clear? Hey, the guy, the the uh, the student who asked me a question. That's a that's the question. No, you need to ask from me. Whether what is the purpose of disclosing this annual effective rate? It's as clear, Puta. Are the Teru other? Okay. So a person who asked me that question, okay the right? Har the Buddha Teru other. I need a face back, Buddha. Huh? Yes. Ani ka kya ano ko ayi oche sa bilaga tibush gan kya ano? Hari. So okay, clear. I need your support, right? Okay, right. Uh, then uh, try to do, do this question. Compare, contrast, uh, demand, savings, and demand deposits. Characteristics of this product. I think you can do right. Okay, let me now uh, moving to another question. What are the benefits? Six and both. Okay, right, right. Now, so we now moving into the second tone that is type of clients that is investors that is investors now we are going to discuss now earlier we discussed depositors right now we are going to discuss the investors clear now who is an investor so now under this also like earlier what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss type of investors right type of investors as well as type of investing products and their features right okay now certain things is not here but don't worry so who is an investor right investor mean i mean he invest uh money in the market right uh based on uh invest is a person who invests their money for certain investing products and try to earn uh, some return for that. So you know the principle. Possible higher the return, higher the risk. That I don't want to tell. Right? That's a simple. Greater the risk, larger the return to the investor. Right? Higher the risk, higher the return. That's another very much principle right okay now investing in any money is all about risk that you understand right and also remember no investment is inherently 100% safe or guaranteed but we will talk there are some 100% guaranteed instrument but usually even the no investment is inherently that's the word inherently 100% safe or guaranteed. So therefore, there's an axiom called the greater the risk, the greater the reward. As far as the instruments are called. Now, so therefore, the financial professionals like me and you break those investors into three categories. Into three categories based on what the investor's appetite based on the investor's appetite right now risk appetite can be further divided into two one is uh, you know based on the risk capacity risk appetite can be divided into two that means based on the risk capacity risk capacity means uh, to what extent person uh, can absorb the risk? What extent person can absorb the risk? Right? To what extent the person uh, ab can absorb the risk? So, to what extent that the investor can absorb the risk is called the risk capacity. 
right? At the second point, the risk appetites depend on the risk attitude. Risk attitude. Now, okay. Now let's let's look at it. This right. Risk appetite. Right. Two types. One. Capacity. Capacity. Right. Capacity. Right. That means risk capacity. To to what extent you can absorb the risk. Second point, attitudes on the risk. Attitudes, we call risk attitude. I'll say risk attitudes. Based on the risk attitude, the people can categorize investors into three types. What are the three types? Risk lover or seeker whatever then risk neutral and risk averse clear right okay now we are going to discuss i hope you understood right so investing in money all about risk you cannot inherently eliminate the risk but you can control you can mitigate to some extent, right? So the risk appetite, investors' risk appetite can be divided into two to extend the person uh, willing to take the risk, right? That is the risk appetite. It depends on two factors, risk capacity and risk attitude. Risk capacity means to what extent a person can absorb the risk. The other factor is the risk attitude. The risk, based on the risk attitude, the professionals can break them into three types of uh, customers, investors. One, risk lover customer or risk seeking customer, risk neutral customer, and risk our uh, ours customers so they don't like the risk right now let's look at it some features about the investor we call them as risk seeking investor that means risk lover bicycle the risk lover the keener the investor is for risk higher the risk but it's a principle higher the return. So risk seeker is always going to invest their product, uh, invest their money in a high risk yield instrument. So the risk taking investor is the investor who is willing to take an additional risk for his higher return. So that means uh, another way you can say the risk lover has increasing marginal utility of income. Increasing the marginal utility. So therefore, if you really put, what is the, his diagram is like this. We call uh, this side is utility. And this is the return we call the income or return return or income what is the shape going to be like this we call as how you call this type of uh, uh, graph i think you will learn no in o level a level some people at a level how you call this type of graph what can you make it Killing it or not again? Straight line. Saral reiki. So what is this? Physics or lehema beginning at the? How you? The curve go like this. How you call this graph? What is the shape of the curve? Do you know what? Single lehema beginning at the? Parallel. Awatthala, right? Awatthala. English or not? 
concave, concave graph, right? Okay, so therefore the risk loving investor graph should be their, their life, uh, their risk taking uh, pattern is representing the concave, concave graph, concave graph, right? Behavior. Right. Then we move into it is pathogen. That is may better than the utility, may better than income. Then draw this diagram. Right. We call them as concave, concave. Right. Any graphy? Oh, our teller, our teller, concave. Right. Risk level. Right. Second, risk neutral investor. Now, risk neutral investor select investment with the highest expected return now what is this going that mean return they go you know what we got to him and lord sarala leki elisa very right so what is the marginal uh, uh, utility of income straight line right if you draw straight line it is the it is not the preference between risk and hours but it's go straight line if you draw this one Let's go like this, right? A straight line. So the next type of investor we call risk averse investor. Now, risk averse investor would generally choose the guaranteed payment. Now he believes that something is better than nothing. He's expecting I need at least so much. Right? So how can you reduce the risk? Risk averse investor might choose to put this money into a bank account with a low guaranteed interest rather than into the stock may have high expected return but he's not going to put the money for stocks but he say okay at least i need some money this bank will give you so much i'll put in that money. so therefore his graph other way is called concave sorry convex convex Uttal. Uttala Kaja. Okay. Uttala Sarupyatama chart like it. So therefore, what we have learned now, we discuss, we identify we identify three types of investors. What are the three types of investors? Risk lover, risk neutral. Preservers. Clear the Theruna Apit Hadunaga Apiki Visalaga, saving invest Kasi, savings account holders, fixed deposit holders. Likewise, we identify three type of investors based on what? Based on their risk appetite. Avadama, Avadana, Gana, so Bahaviano Apit investors Latundi. Right? Okay. Now you understood. Uh, the type of investors, right? Terada, right? I put. I need your feedback from you. Okay, understood. Type of investors, clear the. Are the? Yes. Sir. Got it. Three yes, types sir. of investors, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Katakara do mogolonde, right? Okay. Hariya wari wachaya garadi ibo agi. We have to go to the next one. Why should I go to the next one? Right? Okay. So now, we, we have, having understood this type of customer, okay, question. This question came on 2017 and September 2018, March as well. You see, who is a retail investor? Who is a retail investor? Now, retail me the guy who invested for himself, right? Okay, retail investor me individual investor who buys and sells securities for their personal account and not for their company organs. So that is a retail investor. Simple, no? The investor, individual investor who buys and sells securities for their personal account and not for their company organization we call retail investor. 
is a corporate investor the the person who buys and sell securities for their organization is called corporate investor in that case right now you know who is a retail investor right why we are learning this now what we are going to discuss some products financial instrument these investors are going to purchase or buy right okay let me ex first start it with government bonds the treasury bills and treasury bonds i think you may learn all these things in uh, commercial banking you may learn survey all uh, you are learning these things but my case also you are learning but we by we look at in a different light right okay now you know treasury bills and treasury bonds are guaranteed by the government usually when the uh, guarantee given by the government we call uh, these instrument as gilt age securities right the moment the government give you the guarantee so it call gilt age securities so what do you mean by the gilt age securities default risk is free but there are instances you cannot say but at least we need to assume the government treasury bills and bonds are guaranteed by the government so therefore those uh, those securities are we call or investment instruments are called gilt age securities right gilt age securities right okay then remember so now the important things now who says the treasury bills and treasury bonds Central Bank of Sri Lanka, behalf of the government. So, who issues these treasury bills and treasury bonds? Those treasury bills and bonds are issued by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka on behalf of the government of Sri Lanka. Right? Who buys the treasury bills and treasury bond from the uh, from the central bank? BLU? No, we are not going to buy. Who is buying? Who are the people who buy the treasury bills and bought from the central bank? How they were building them? Bank. Yeah, there is a separate name for them. Not banks. There are some subsidiaries of the bank. Private dealers. Private dealers, right? Private dealers. Banks, the way, but there, but there are private uh, institutions also. You know, we have. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have around. Uh, can't remember. We had fifteen private dealers in Sri Lanka. Out of fifteen, you know, out of fifteen, what are they for? How the? A peloka. Who? What is a treasury bill cancer? Uh, treasury, uh, sorry, private dealer cancer. There are three companies cancer. Who are they? Who are they? Perpetual, what the kind? Bond, bond issue, perpetual treasuries. What else? Then, interest securities, interest securities, and another one. Interest securities, perpetual treasuries, and Malaysia Bank. Malaysia Bank also cancel. Now recently. Another finance primary dealer uh, request uh, from the central bank. Uh, they said they can't anymore do the treasury uh, primary dealer uh, business in Sri Lanka. They voluntarily ask for the cancellation from their uh, license. What is that company? Can anybody tell me? Recently, in fact, last. Uh, I think November first onwards, that be twenty twenty November onwards. What five hundred dollar? Because because we need to get the license for Central Bank to uh, do the treasury bill business as a primary dealer. At that particular company, request from the Central Bank. I don't anymore don't going to be work as a primary dealer. Please. Excuse me, or cancel my license. 
but not the central bank. The earlier cases, the central bank has cancelled, but here they request to cancel, uh, terminate. What is that treasury uh, primary deal is called? Remember, net wealth, net wealth. So there are some private uh, uh, primary dealers as well as government banks or private banks, primary dealers, right? Altogether now at the moment is 11, I suppose, right? Okay. So what their job is to buy treasury bills at treasury bond for the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. From, that's a primary market. From customers are buying, or investors are buying, or normal retail investors are buying treasury bills and bonds from what you call from these primary dealers. That is what you call the secondary market. So remember the treasury bills and treasury bonds are tradable securities. When you have a tradable like can you can tell me another tradable uh, instrument you are aware? Very famous one. Can you name another tradable instrument? Ah, simple. What is it? At the stock exchange? What do you have it? Shares. Shares also tradable. Right, okay. You, uh, treasury, uh, those are through tradable securities. Is that through the electronic auction? Now you know what happened with this. Uh, auctions, right? I don't want to explain that. Okay, so we consider as treasury bills and treasury bonds are rather than it is a very liquid product near to cash, near to cash. Why? It is easily can be convertible to cash. You can secondary sell this product in the secondary market because of the tradability and earns a money. It's okay. What are the main features of treasury bills and treasury bonds? Default risk free, guilt age debt instrument. Those are debt instrument, right? Right. By, by the investors. Treasury bill is a short term zero coupon debt instrument. I will tell you what you mean by zero coupon. Treasury bond is a medium to long term debt instrument. Treasury bills are short term, right? Okay, and remember, it is a tradable uh, instrument. You can make use as a uh, as a uh, collateral, as a collateral. Those are some of the treasury bill characteristics. Okay, have you understood that? Now you look at it. What is treasury bills? Treasury bill is a short-term debt instrument issued by the government of Sri Lanka under the local treasury bill ordinance 8th of 2, 1923. But, but don't worry about this law. But remember, uh, it's a treasury bill is a short-term debt instrument issued by who? Government, by the central bank, behalf of the government. And usually, it's having the period of one year issued in maturities of 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. Zero coupon securities. What do you mean by a secret, uh, zero coupon securities? Now, in treasury bills and treasury bond, we won't say interest. We call them as coupon rate. Right? Remember, in, uh, in treasury bills and treasury bond, we never talk about interest rate. So instead of that, we are talking coupon rate. Treasury bill is a zero coupon security. So what do you mean by that? So that means those are sold at a discount at two face value, which is paid at maturity. What do you mean by that? Now say treasury bills. If you want to buy 100 rupee treasury bills, what is, how are you going to pay for that? Say your coupon rate, say your uh, buy price is the, say, 90 rupees. What is the discount price? What is the discount you are going to get it? 10 rupees. Because you are purchased at a 90 rupees, but who matured after one year, 
you are getting 100. So it depends, right? It go for 364, 91 days. Accordingly, the interest will be changed. But sold at a discount to face value. That means 100 rupee value of face value, you can buy it for 10, uh, like E85 or whatever. Right? Okay, that means interest paid upfront in that case or other year. So the difference between the purchase price and the face value is the interest income to the order. Are they there? Right. You should liquid asset as can be easily sold in the secondary market and can be converted to cash. Right? Now the maximum amount of treasury bills to be issued decided by the parliament. And issues as strip of financial is earlier you have a document. Now we are issuing at the treasury bills. Right. I think you now know treasury bills. Now let me look at it now. The uh, what do you mean by a treasury bond? Right? Like earlier, treasury bond is a medium and long term debt instrument issued by the government of Sri Lanka on the 7th of 1937 when it traces domestic public debt uh, for budgetary purposes. Remember, uh, you noted that the Treasury Bill is the first uh, introduced, is, is introduced in 1993, but here 1997. So what are the characteristics of a Treasury Bond again? as we will aware what is that medium and long term government securities are issued in a maturities ranging from two years to 30 years two years to 30 years interest bearing securities usually we interest is paid by monthly by sorry by annually so we call cooper rate for semi-annual cooper rate carry a regular cash flow, tradable, even if they are long term, can be traded, can be traded in the secondary market. So these are the government instruments purchased by or money invested by investors. Clear? Right. Okay. I'll give you two questions now. Can immediately we can do? Right? First, give five reasons why should invest investor invest in treasury bills and treasury bonds. Second one. Treasury bills, treasury bonds, compare and contrast. Okay, can you do just quick two questions? First question, give five reasons, at least, okay, four reasons why investor buy TBs. Treasury bills or treasury bonds. Second question, compare and contrast treasury bills and treasury bonds. Okay. Can you take a piece of paper? Can I just give you two, three minutes? Can you write, Buddha? Can you write? Right? Right? Okay. Can you write? First, four reasons why investor buy treasury bills and treasury bonds. Second one, compare and contrast treasury bills and treasury bonds. This is good for your survey, commercial banking, all right? Okay. What are the five reasons? Tell me one reason. Why investor like to buy, uh, uh, or oh, I mean, invest money in a treasury bills and treasury bond? One means first one, simple. 
Default risk free that means those are guilted securities. Good, first point. Those are default risk free that means guilted securities instrument. Okay, right. One, two, another one. Simple, tell me. Those are what? Both are tradable securities. Both are tradable securities. Both are tradable security. You can have the secondary market. If you want money, you can sell it. Those are tradable securities. Two. Another one. You can tell me another one. Another why investor will need to spend. Another one. You can make use as like the FT as what? As securities or collaterals. You can make use of as collaterals. You can make use as collateral. Another one. You are contributing to the national economy and the growth. You are contributing because why? Why government are taking this money for countries develop? So you are contributing for national development and uh, so economy growth, right? So remember, why those are we? What to who we are giving? We are giving to the country. Why they buy this thing? to uh, develop but the infrastructure or economic growth, economic development activities. So you are build a proud investor of certain projects, highway also you are contributing by buying that product through the taxes, through the stationary mills and bonds. Right. Okay. I will ask you another a simple question. Can foreigners buy treasury bills and treasury bond? Foreign banks can buy. Pardon? If they if they got uh, license, yeah. foreign banks can uh, buy. But how much you think? Okay, I leave it for that. Okay, now you know the. Yeah. Can we compare this one? Treasury bills and treasury bonds. Right. What are the similar? Now remember the examiner asks you. Compare and contrast. That means first you need to compare what are the similarities. What are the similarities of treasury bills and treasury bond? So both are again what? Gilded securities issued by Central Bank of Sri Lanka behalf of the government. Both are sold by electronic auctions right Harvey so those are similarities okay uh, now differences tell me differences simple now we learn no? what what difference treasury bills significant difference is what a long term debt and short term debt yes instrument. okay good treasury bills are short term then you have to say Better you always say short term. Okay, good short term. Good. Short term and long term. Long term can be bought. Medium to long term. So then can be purchased from how many? 91. What? 182 and 364. Here, two to 30 years. Yeah, right? Okay. Can you tell me another name for short term and long term? What type of instrument? Therefore, treasury bills is what type of instrument? Treasury bills is what? Huh? Money market instrument. So therefore, P bills are what market instrument? Anything Money market is to work. Here we call capital market is to work. Capital market is to work. 
what is tabe kakke what are the differences tertiary ways tertiary ways short term long term or medium to long term selling at 91 182 364 2 to 30 years period money market is to what capital market is to tertiary ways say selli at what at at what discount here how of a semi annual coupon rates it has to be paid semi annually usually semi annual right if you want you can put the the not and say treasury bills short term debt is to what 8th of 23 is the low low fact 8th of ek thira no ante right uh, 8th of 1923 under that permitted to issue here we say the treasury bond 7 of 1937 ek no ante ki thira right what is short term three bills three bonds right okay so that's it up no that's more than it up okay clear and we can weather got come if uh, if when we learn we try to uh, try to uh, answer uh, the uh, question any questions coming on these two areas so what are the things uh, you can ask for treasury bills and treasury bond why investors are prefer to buy treasury bills and treasury bonds what are the differences between these two right okay what are the characteristics those are the simple things i think you now got the clear idea about treasury bills and treasury bonds now i'll ask from you whether uh, i ask from you somebody uh, told me yes sir we uh, we can sell right okay right now this is not my questions right you see i because this subject my subject can be answered to anyone this is the questions came on non bank financial banking ek a optional subject but don't worry 2000 march night you they asked out of the total outstanding government security stock now i told you uh, so uh, you need to get a uh, basically you need to obtain uh, the uh, parliament approval to issue the total number of treasury bills for the country right out of the total outstanding government security stock the current reserve applicable for foreign investment in treasury bills and bonds would be how much 20% 15% 10% or 5% ah again is a pure tradable karana pramane foreigner kenu na idu billion c ak na foreigner kenu kutta na ta foreign investment ekak washe bavitha karanna pula upariwa kiyeda c at c at gatta c at how much any any guesses any guesses is 5% is 5% early it is 10% now break down to 5% why why if they reduce this the issue is danger if the foreigner can withdraw the money and is going for so that's the reason right 5% at the moment okay right another question is from nbfb now i think you can answer for this what to answer a party who is authorized to deal with the central bank to enter into a transactions is government securities directly as a count counter party is what is the answer primary dealer we discussed earlier uh, the person who acted for the government is called primary dealer right now we are going to discuss another important thing is repurchase agreement repo we call them as a repo transaction now we discuss uh, 
the treasury bills at treasury bond is usually is heavier rather than treasury bond the treasury bills is usually is having a uh, trade the secondary market a repurchase agreement that key the repo basically it is a contract it is a contract uh, actually this repurchase agreement is introduced in 1993 right uh, agreement uh, in which the seller of the securities seller of the securities sell their treasury bills agree to buy back agree to buy back at a specified time and price so that is pre purchase agreement right now look at it this one the first one what is meant by that first take what is pre purchase agreement it is the sale of securities together with an agreement for the seller to buy back the securities at a later date later date right so that is the pre purchase agreement now seller lender of money say for an example here we take an example some banks you know some banks if they have excess money what they are doing they deposit the money with the central bank and collect uh, the deposit again the next week for that they will take some interest okay right that is free purchase agreement it is a contract in which the seller of the securities sell treasury bills at treasury bonds sells secondary bills right that we as collateral sales bill as collateral treasury bills at treasury bonds agree to buy back at the specified time at the price the first one is the seller at the time maturity we they buy they will give back the cash and with the interest to the lender and they will take back the collateral again that is what you call repurchase agreement now the repurchase price repurchase price should be greater than the original sales price that is what you call the repo rate the difference effectively represented in the interest is type time called the repo rate if the examiner asks the repo rate the repurchase price should be greater than the original sales price now here whatever right now seller gives the money back to the bank right now first say a take the this example take this example there are two institution a and b what is initial transactions in repo agreement we call open in lex takes place at date t now institution x they have its sub treasury bonds or treasury uh, rather than a not a treasury bills right and they give to institution y and they take money from institution y put it collateral as institution x but institution x is telling here i will give back i need this my treasury bills and bills later on at agreed this thing at agreed price now the close the transaction will say after t1 days institution ask the treasury bills again from institution one and give the money back to institution y now here 100 000 million us dollars here 1 million 13889 so what is that part that is what you call the repurchase price so repurchase price is more than your selling price so 13889 is the your profits so your repurchase price is more than your selling price what is your selling price 1 billion here what is your uh, repurchase price apu gallo 
දුල් එක අපව විල්ල හැබැයි මේ විදුට දෙල්ල ඕනේ අපව රිටර්ඩ් වෙන්න ඕනේ තව right reporting right okay if you want please uh, put down this uh, small stick in your hand out query we can ready aga so so if you want report terminology is very benefited to you right participants if you want otherwise just forget about if you do the opposite side of that we call reverse repo so today we are talking about standard deposit facility rate standard deposit by rate uh, repo rates today we are talking on that i think you will learn more on this in your survey in your survey right right clear remember names ah huh? right draw like this two institutions right b e sel security This is near legs, near leg, that is far leg, bicycle is right. so you are you're getting cash receiver now b is the lender a is a receiver or seller right he sells his securities and ask the money from him so a is who the a is a borrow why 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 he borrow he is give his uh, uh, securities to be and collect the money so he is borrowing the money from me for that as a security what is giving treasury bills with an accrued period at maturity and that mean the tail leg whatever he asks to give back his B is requests us to give his securities back, and for that he give money. So that is repo rate. That is cash plus interest. So repo rate is the difference between these two. Repo mean repo mean basically say X. This is y. X minus y is the repo rate. So therefore, 
A is always a borrower because he gives his security, keep security under his custody as a mortgage, give the money. And A said, okay, I will buy back this the security which I give it to you at a future date, maybe that's a period of date, maybe three days time. Now onwards, I will buy agreed date, agreed price at say 5% or whatever, for example. So that is a repo rate mean. This price minus this, that mean X minus Y is your repo rate. Okay, that is how repurchase agreement is taking place. The opposite side of that is called reverse repo. Understood? Right? Clear? I try to explain the very simple way as possible, right? And, and mind you, again, I'm just telling you this repurchase agreement is benefited for your survey commercial banking as well. Right? So, so it's good for you to know all these things. Right. Going back. Okay, tell another. Any feedback? Understood? Yes, right? sir. Right. Okay. Now, I think you need to answer these things now. Simple, right? Okay. Okay, this is a survey of financial system, not my subject. Huh? Report transaction is a what transaction? Report transaction is a what transaction? Here, look at it. Report. You sell securities to be in and he gives the money to you. He takes the money from where? From the lender or the bank or whoever. What you are getting? Money. There we have. Oh, hurry. Now I can't walk out. Go hurry. Bagi, there we can't wait. Car, auto, okay. Car, okay. Pota, tiya na sali ara gan. Idhar kau the kau the gan nikki na. Mama ni sali gan ni ne idhar. Idhar mama baro. It's not only when a transaction, then with the way, a win water. What you are doing with the uh, what is the guarantee you're going to give? Treasury bills and bond. If it is the case, we call the report transaction, right? What's the answer for this? Report transaction is a the mother hand, we can then have what to do. Say you here, a you give your securities. And ask the money. So A is there for who? Is a who is A? Is a borrower. So what is the transactions took place in there at the repo? What transaction? It is a repo transaction. We could get a re repurchase agreement. It's a repurchase transaction. So report report transaction is a borrowing. Okay, then what about the I'll ask you. I'll give the same question to you. Instead of repo, I put it reverse repo. What may be the correct answer? I make it to reverse repo transaction is a what transaction? Is a borrowing there? So it is not a borrowing there. It is lending. Right? He gives back. He's a lender. Lender gives his security to him and asks the money. So therefore, if you if a reverse repo comes here, instead of repo, it's a lending transaction. But the repo transaction is a borrowing transaction. Remember. Always a report transaction is a borrowing transaction. A reverse report transaction is a lending transaction. You need to remember that. This is not my subject, but it is CFS subject. But 
since we need to understand this, we need to know this. Okay? Right. Okay. Oh, 10 5. I started at 8 15. All right. Borrow it. Transfer. Okay. Try to give me answer. This. Watch. This is again not mine. No? What's now? I need to this answer. Treasury bonds are always issued at. What's the correct answer? Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Huh? Central, Central Bank of Sri Lanka. No, no. Oh, it's, you, it's you that. Uh, so look at the question. Treasury bond. Treasury bond are always issued at. How Primary dealers. Coupon. No, no, no. Buddha. What is the mode of. Uh, Payments. Now you have to look at the question. Uh, you have to give uh, look at the answer. No? You that somebody tell me the correct answer. Primary dealers. Coupon. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. no there is a question answer given. No, Buddha. Okay. Uh, okay. Forget about. Ah. Now you okay. Look at it. What's the answer for this? Especially bills are always issued at. Discount. Okay. Discount. I told you, treasury bills. You don't want to pay, say, a face value of 100 rupees. How much you need to pay? 90 rupees. The difference is what you call discount. So the treasury bills are always issued at discount. That means you want to say, for have the face value of 100 rupees, you don't want to pay 100 rupees to the treasury, uh, primary dealer. How much you need to pay? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, primary dealer. How much you need to pay to the central bank? Only the rupees so that means treasury bills are always issued at discount okay now you tell me uh, treasury bond always issued at what what is the method of payments of treasury bonds investor what is the yield for you coupon rate the coupon there are other so what is the income he is getting usually semi annual coupon and you have a method of the compare color up here a treasury bill with treasury body compact and order a pick you up treasury bill always sell at discount treasury bond usually get a coupon rate as on one basis semi annually coupon again the bars are high cut as a reaction interest take a half better and by some poor regard of a given load of a treasury bill like a short term in the water maturity in the way pull about the company Got it? So that is called treasury bills always sell it at discount, treasury bond at coupon. Okay? Right? Right. Okay, so uh, we will uh, do the next part on next Saturday, the stocks and other part. Uh, I think uh, you may learn all these things. Uh, right? Clear? Understood? No? Okay, clear? Right? Okay, clear? Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. So we stop now. Okay, uh, any questions? Any questions, Buddha? Any questions? No, sir. Right, okay. We will please go through the notes, right? Uh, and, and in fact, uh, we will discuss the balance uh, area where the investors are investing. And uh, later part, we are going to discuss our questions on that. Okay, so see you on next Sunday, 1 o'clock. Thank you. Being thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you very much, uh, very much for your sacrificing your poetry, right, with me for very early morning. Thank you.